Hello, I'm Lei, and welcome to the first of my Inktober videos for 2017. For the month of October, I am devoted to posting an inked image every day on my Instagram, which is linked below in the description box, and I hope to post two videos a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays instead of my usual one video on Friday. Each week through Inktober, I'm doing a different theme for my art pieces, all related to autumn or Halloween in some way. This week is horror monsters, so I'm starting it up with my interpretation of a female version of the Red Pyramid from Silent Hill 2, more affectionately known as Pyramid Head. This is the first of two Silent Hill pieces I've drawn for Inktober, and it's my favorite of the two. I tried to capture the sort of weird way Pyramid Head holds himself, and I knew I needed to get the great knife in there somehow. Due to the constraints of Inktober and my free time, since I do have a day job, it's not quite as detailed as I would hope, especially in the actual pyramid head thing, but I may revisit this in the future to add details. Silent Hill is my favorite game series, and Silent Hill 2 is my favorite game from the series. The monsters are terrifying and unique, the story, especially that crazy twist at the end, and the sound design and music absolutely blew me away when I first played it. I still listen to Akira Yamaoka's soundtracks to the point he's my most listened artist according to my last FM account, and Silent Hill 2's soundtrack is one of my top listened albums. I originally drew the sketch for Pyramid Head for an art challenge in September that I ended up not finishing, but I wanted to finish the sketch and see her in inks. Silent Hill 2 is one of those games I could very easily see with different genders, and I don't think it would lose anything. The story would be just as affecting, and the monsters would be just as terrifying. Okay, so unpopular opinion here, but I enjoyed the Silent Hill movies. Or at least, I really enjoyed the first one and kinda just tolerated the second one. I really love horror movies, and I watch them regardless of whether they have fancy huge budgets or are campy B-movies with bad effects and acting, so I'm super easygoing when it comes to horror movies. I know the Hollywood remake machine would never be able to churn out anything similar in feel and tone to the original Silent Hill games. The second movie is especially way off base, but at least the first one is at least kind of close to the original source material. The monsters and fog look great anyway. Pyramid Head looks great in the movies, even though he's turned into an anti-hero in the second movie. Uh, I'm starting to remember how awful that movie was. The first movie though, he's great, so watch that if you need a Silent Hill fix. Or even better, play the game. My piece for day two is also Silent Hill, and this time it's one of the bobble-headed nurses. I somehow duplicated the image and deleted the original sketch, so I'm missing the footage of the sketching process. So going back to the movie talk, I do like how the nurses look in the movies with the rough textures and deformed look to their lack of faces, but in the original game their faces, or lack thereof, are smooth, almost to the point they appear glossy. They're just all smeared with blood so they appear textured. So these first two days of Inktober do feel sanitized, but I also want to keep my art on Instagram and on YouTube family friendly. So, day three is a vampire, or what I would prefer a vampire to look like. I've never really drawn a vampire before. I don't dislike them, but they aren't my favorite horror monsters, which I suppose is why this was a challenge. I know I'm doing a theme every week, but for the daily art I haven't pre-decided on anything. As long as it fits the theme, and if I can think up an idea for it, I'll draw it. So now seems like a good time to discuss the so-called Inktober drama slash controversy because everyone and their mother has given their viewpoint on this, but I'm sure someone is curious why if Jake Parker, creator of Inktober, is so adamant that his challenge is about real actual ink and pens, then why am I doing mine completely digital? 
If you've watched my tutorials on digital inking or traditional inking, you know I've discussed digital inking is easier on my body than traditional inking is. And for a lot of people, that's true. With digital, you can adjust pressure sensitivity. You can create broader strokes and then erase the parts you don't need. The way I ink digitally is less finicky than inking traditional, and so I'm not dealing with cramping up my hand or bothering my wrist when I do it. And yes, I know there are brush pens or using a brush with dip ink, but that isn't how I want my inked lines to look, and it isn't beneficial to my style of art to work with either. The point of Inktober for me is personal improvement. If you do want proof that I can ink traditional, I have a tutorial doing just that. I also have sketchbook tours going back to the year 2000 where all I did was ink traditional. So I'm not going to get into too much of a rant on the subject, even though I definitely could, but the too long didn't read version is this. Digital is kinder on my body and I don't want to further my decline into carpal tunnel hell by killing my wrist doing 31 traditionally ink drawings every day. Anyway, let's move on because I'm just sounding ranty anyway. Next drawing. So probably the last horror movie that really got under my skin and gave me wicked nightmares would be The Ring. And yes, I mean the English version because I didn't even know about the world of Asian horror movies until The Ring came along. Until The Ring, it never occurred to me that a horror movie could be so creepy. I'd experienced omnipotent, never-stopping forces in Freddy and Jason, but neither felt as horrific as Samara crawling slowly out of the well. I developed this absolute obsession with Asian horror, not just Japanese. And yeah, there's a lot of long-haired, weefy girl ghosts in those films, which I think added to how frightening they were. A little girl literally scaring people to death in these horrific ways? That was mind-blowing to me. Actually, the fact Pyramid Head, a bobblehead nurse, and Sadako slash Samara are in the same video is really entertaining since I discovered both The Ring and Silent Hill 2 around the same time, and they both freaked me out equally. And they inspired how I write horror as well, which I'm going to get into in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this tour through the process of my first four Inktober pieces. My next Inktober video for the next three pieces will be up Saturday, so I hope to see you then. Please like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Thank you so much. Bye!